What kind of impact should fans expect the newly added Gerard Encarnacion to make to the team? Is Farhan Zaidi on the hot seat if the Giants fail to make the playoffs, which is looking like the most likely outcome? And can they play better on the road? All that next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, been hosting this show for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already, and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs are over in other sports, the sports stop sportsing like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And where we get started is by jumping straight into the mailbag questions. Thank you so much to the many, many of you who submitted questions on Twitter or X. Uh, The first batch of questions is going to be about the newly added Gerard Encarnacion. We discussed him yesterday and how Andrew Baggerly reported that he was going to be uh, added to the roster and so he was and the questions are from Nico who says what's the play when Gerard gets called up is it Conforto or Yaz that goes to the bench Francesca asks what do you think of Encarnacion Mike says do you see Encarnacion having an impact on this team Yoki says optimism level for Gerard Encarnacion and chubby boy says what role will Gerard play? And so those are a lot of similar yet somewhat different questions. And I just want to reiterate what his, what the um, numbers, what he was doing in AAA. So he's 26 years old, turns 27 in October, and he was playing in like the, in a, in the Mexican professional league for Oaxaca, I think it was, and hit like 18 homers and 20 something games. I mean, it was just ridiculous what he did. And then the Giants signed him. He was a former uh, pretty good prospect for the Miami Marlins and had a brief stint in the major leagues, struck out 40% of the time. And that was kind of the end of it. Um, but in AAA with the Giants this year in 33 games, he hit 10 homers. Strikeout rate was a very reasonable 24%. And he hit 352 with a 438 on base and 616 slugging. And so to answer the first question, I think that's probably the most, um, you know, the question was, is it Conforto or Yaz that goes to the bench? I don't think it's either against a right-handed pitcher in the beginning. Now, I'm assuming that's not going to be a popular answer with some of you to kind of insinuate that there's a going to be a platoon with Encarnacion but I don't I just don't think that the plan is okay we're just going to bench Michael Conforto or Mike Yastrzemski both of whom are you know at the very least solid major league players and Gerard Encarnacion is completely unproven as a major league player so I don't it's not like it's, they just have these black hole spots on the corner you know in the corner outfield and he's just going to go in and become an everyday player right away. I think he's going to have to earn that. And so they are facing a lefty tonight, so I would expect very much that Encarnacion will be in the lineup tonight. Mark Canna was also added to the roster, by the way. I expect him to be in the lineup tonight. I'm going to guess Canna at first base with Wade not starting. And some people said, like, oh, I hate the Canna edition because it takes at-bats away from Wade. Wade has not been starting against left-handed pitching for quite a while. And so I just think, you know, instead of David VR, it's going to be Mark Canna, a more proven player. Um, and then they had uh, they had Derek Hill on this roster, and he was designated for assignment 
to make room for Encarnacion. So I do think in this case, it'll probably be Michael Conforto who goes to the bench. It could be Yastrzemski. It'll be one or the other. And I think Encarnacion will probably uh, be in a in left or something, left or right. Um, and then not start against right-handed pitching, at least until he... If he comes up and just starts mashing, then he'll get more playing time. That's just kind of how it goes. That's how Bob Melvin has operated. And so what role will he play? I think, you know, that Derek Hill role, but with a chance to hopefully establish himself as more of an everyday player. I'm not saying they just, like, rule that out immediately. I'm saying he's got to earn it. So if you go out there and hit two homers against a lefty, then maybe they throw you in the lineup the next day, you know, or even one homer, just have really good at bats, just have a great game. You know, maybe they just throw you out there the next day and that's how you kind of take hold of an everyday role. And we've already seen that this year with a couple of young players like Elliot Ramos and Tyler Fitzgerald and even Brett Wisely to an extent. So anyway, that's kind of my expectation is that, I don't have extremely high expectations, but I'm, you know, an unproven player, a guy who's never had success in the majors. I just am always going to be skeptical until there's a reason to uh, doubt until until prove, proven otherwise. So that's my answer on that one. The next batch of questions about is about Farhan Zaidi. Now, um, I do also just want to point out the Gerard Encarnacion, 6'4", 250 is the listed height and weight. So big player. So I don't know, maybe he plays first and Canna's in the outfield. I'm not entirely sure. I'll refresh. My internet internet went down here, but I'm hoping to get a lineup um, so we can see and I can answer directly um, what the plan is for him. But so far we don't have a lineup and for Canna. So anyway, like I said, the next batch of questions is about Farhan Zaidi, and there's a bunch of them. Again, they're similar. SF Sports Fam says, would you consider Farhan's tenure as a success? His last six years have only garnered one playoff appearance, but no wildcard berths. I understand Farhan was given a terrible situation. Yes, he was, but one out of six years is not acceptable. We as fans deserve better need a real superstar bat and dl8 says top question has to be will the giants fire zaidi end of season ronnie says true or false the reason the giants didn't sell during deadline is because making the playoffs is the only way farhan keeps his job anime consumerism says how many games back of the third wild card spot would the giants have to be for farhan to be fired in your opinion and soggy waffles says will farhan get the boot this off season and so you know those are not all exactly the same question they're pretty related but uh i'm going to answer all the subtle nuances there um first of all no, I would not consider his tenure as a success ultimately SF Sports fan because, I mean, for, first of all, I got to say it's so far one out of five years because, right, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, this year isn't over yet, right? So we can't call this a one out of six. I get it. They're not in a playoff position currently, and the odds are against them to make it again. And the record just is disappointing right now so that's a fact but also this year isn't over yet so i i'm not going to call it one out of six it's one out of five and then one year in progress um so yeah really uh i certainly it's hard to call that a success it's it's not um but at the same time there are things about the tenure that are successful um a lot of the trades a lot of the smaller kind of trades have yielded big results and uh, we'll continue to answer these questions about Zaidi uh, in just a minute. I will go into much more detail, and then we'll get into questions like, why did they trade Jorge Soler? What's my prediction for this road trip? And much more. So all of that coming up in just a minute. And before we get into it. Today's episode of Locked on Giants is brought to you in part by FanDuel. I love sports, you know that. Um, I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs have wound down in other sports, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't quite sportsing like I want them to. 
But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. I am on FanDuel.com right now. And the Giants are favorites tonight with... I thought it was supposed to be Kyle Harrison, but apparently Blake Snell going uh, tonight. I got, you know, on the Giants website, it says Blake Snell. And so I'm I'm going with it's Blake Snell starting tonight. And so that makes them favorites uh, against a good left-handed pitcher and Andrew Abbott, who dealt against the Giants last year in Cincinnati, if I recall. So anyway, Giants favorites at minus 132 um, on the money line. And anyway, with baseball, there's just so much action you can get in on so head over to fanduel.com and check it out for yourself and fanduel is an official sports betting partner of major league baseball today's episode is also brought to you in part by our good friends over at supply house get supplies from the site site that's made for the skilled trades supplyhouse.com get uh excuse me supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing hvac and electrical products online their easy to use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. All right, as promised, we're going to continue answering this question about Farhan Zaidi, his performance as president of baseball operations for the Giants, and get into many more questions as well. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is on Monday. We're going to be breaking down the three-game series the Giants are having here, in, not here, but in Cincinnati, um, where they need to play better on the road. That's been the problem, really. If you look at kind of the overall numbers, it's just performance on the road has been the biggest issue if you're looking at kind of big picture stuff for the Giants. So we'll be breaking down this three-game series. Giants facing some tough pitching, but the Reds haven't been performing great, so we'll see what happens. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, a reminder, you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. So, uh... The following up on this question, just continuing to answer. Um, yeah, it, I can't say it. Uh, one, I agree with you. It comes down to record and playoff like appearances. I think playoff results are a little bit more random. But if you're going 162 games times six seasons, I get it. This year's not over. I already said that. 2020, it was a 60 game season, not 162 because of COVID. But No, that's not successful. And I think by this point, the expectation should have been and is that he would have made this team into a perennial contender. And so they just haven't been able to get over the hump for some reason. Um, And to answer your question, we need a real superstar bat. To be fair, they have aggressively pursued superstar bats in free agency. And they even got one to agree to terms with them in Carlos Correa. And it was just a freak thing that he happened to have this problem with his ankle. It was a 
$350 million deal that the Giants agreed to with Carlos Correa. They pursued Judge. They pursued Otani. They gave Otani the same offer he took from the Dodgers. You know, so, like, they've tried. Um, and then, like I said, some of the trades, like Lamont Wade Jr., that's a roaring success. We're starting to see some of the fruits of their draft picks, which takes a long time, like Patrick Bailey and Tyler Fitzgerald and... Uh, on the pitching side, Kyle Harrison and Hayden Birdsong. And, um, you know, I, I think those are like the main kind of standouts. Uh, Tyro Estrada, that trade, I know that he's having a down year, but I don't know. A lot of those trades and then some draft picks are turning into successes, including some major ones with the likes of Patrick Bailey. And we'll see, you know, Kyle Harrison, Hayden Birdsong. I think there's a lot of optimism there long term. So getting to the other questions, will he be fired at the end of the season? A couple of people asked that like just directly. My prediction is no, and it has a lot to do with... Um, it has a lot to do with the the positive things that I just said, like the the young players that this regime has drafted kind of coming into their own and performing at the major league level and maybe a belief that it's going to continue to happen and that that will push them over the top and get over the hump. And then also Bob Melvin, I think, it, you know, has been, been very clear. He, he signed a three-year extension with the Giants, and he said he would only do it if Farhan Zaidi got the same one. They wanted he wanted to be linked, like in lockstep with Farhan Zaidi. And so, if you fire Farhan Zaidi, you you're going to you know you're going to possibly make Bob Melvin want to quit. And I just think the disruption, um, you know, it's not like they haven't tried in free agency. You know what I'm saying? And then some of their draft picks are really having success, and so in a way it's hard to blame them for the way things have gone, you know, and you could say, okay, maybe more trade aggression perhaps, but also they believe in the young players and maybe they don't want to give them up. So anyway, how many games back of the third wild card would they have to be to fire Farhan? I mean, geez, that's very specific. I would, I don't know, like, I honestly don't know. I don't think that he gets fired. And so, but maybe like if you finish like eight games back or something, then, and you're like several, several games under 500, maybe they do do something dramatic. But otherwise, I think they're they're kind of committed to Farhan Zaidi and he's largely done what they've wanted him to do because a lot of this stuff does come down to ownership. Like 2022, 2023, especially 2022 after their 107 win season, Farhan has come out and said that their relative inactivity in the market had to do with the economic situation that they were in after the COVID year and having it still affecting them. And so you might be having steam coming out of your ears hearing me say that, but you know, clearly there was like a mandate from ownership to kind of, or at least, you know, just to, to kind of be frugal and they were, but this year they weren't and the team has underperformed. I wouldn't, I think they did enough in the off season to be pretty good, but they've just underperformed this year. But in past years, it was more like they didn't do enough in the off season to improve this year. I think they did, but yet they haven't improved. And that has more to do with players than it does with the front office. Okay. Next question comes from Cabbage, who says, Why would we trade Solaire, man? So much pop, so much swag. That's a guy we've needed. And then he says in parentheses, And yes, I'm glad to see him 0 for 6 so far back in Atlanta, LOL. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think Andrew Baggerly has kind of said it well in some of the stuff that he's written about this trade, which is that they just simply couldn't... Um, turn down the opportunity to shed a three-year, $42.5 million, I believe it was, con contract to a player plus Luke Jackson uh, that they just kind of viewed right away maybe as not a great fit for their team. And a guy who's not young, he's 32, he's going to be 33 um, in February, 
And so the, he would, you know, he signed through his age 34 season and, you know, clogging up the DH spot, just a pure DH, shouldn't play the field. The one complaint I have is like, you that's what you knew you were getting. And he kind of was doing what they knew that he would do. Maybe he just wasn't the monster offensively that they wanted, but he he largely was who he is he was who he is you know he's that's what he is and so the question kind of is more why did they sign him if if they were gonna feel this way because his performance wasn't like so much different than what we should have expected but trading him getting rid of that um commitment for the next two years of just a singular dh i don't think they like having just a singular dh they want to rotate guys through it perhaps it part of the equation changes when certain young players like elliot ramos tyler fitzgerald brett wisely kind of establish themselves maybe it changed like if you look at next year and you think jung hu lee is going to be back elliot ramos is in a corner outfield spot um and then I, I don't know like exactly who the plan w- then would be to be the DH, but uh, they don't want a singular guy, but they signed him to be a singular guy. But I hear you like they do lose something there with Solaire, but also it, when you're just like one dimensional like that, all you do is DH and he, he wasn't like a total monster at the plate overall. He really struggled to start the season. We'll see how the next, two and a half years ago, but now it's Atlanta's uh, situation to deal with. And we'll see if it turns out mediocre to poor, which is, I think mediocre is probably more of what to expect. So anyway, next question is going to come from Bay area champ about predictions for this next road trip. It is crucial that the giants start playing better on the road. Um, We'll talk about their road record and make predictions in just a minute. And before we do, Today's episode of Locked on Giants is brought to you in part by Liquid IV. When you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's Popsicle Firecracker flavor, a surefire summer hit. Get hydrated with electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in America. Because baseball and summer go together like Liquid IV and indulgent hydration. Now, there are so many benefits like staying hydrated while traveling, going to summer festivals, or after a night out, just having liquid IV in your corner. And you can find all your favorite flavors on their website from acai berry to lemon lime to pina colada. Tear, pour, live more. One stick and 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. No more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. All right, here we go. We're going to get to we're kind of rapid fire some questions here thanks again for making locked on giants your first listen every day every day or on monday we'll be breaking down this series uh in cincinnati and then the giants will head to washington dc after that it's kind of like you know one of those eastern road trips i feel like that have given the giants trouble in recent years and so this is a big one this is a big road trip so We'll be, we'll be breaking it down on Monday. And yeah, the next question comes from Bay Area Champ, who says, what's your prediction for this next road trip? With the Padres and D-backs playing well, we can't afford to lose much. That's right. Um, and Mason says, do you think we'll finally play well on the road at, at this time during the year? So somebody asked me in the last mailbag what my prediction was for the, their record, I think, after this road trip or some, something like that. And so far, the Giants do have a winning record uh since the all-star break i think they're seven and six and so all this talk about they've been bad after the all-star break seven and six is not terrible especially that it included a four game series in los angeles you know which i would say they 
could have won like at least one extra game, but then, you know, they did sweep a four game series, which is really hard to do against the Rockies. I mean, it's really hard to do in general and it happened against the Rockies. So my prediction is that this series against the Reds could go either way with a two out of three. You know, I'm never going to predict a sweep for either team usually. And I could see the Giants winning two out of three. I could see the Reds winning two out of three. And of course, sweeps are possible as well. But I don't know. I kind of hedge against being overly optimistic and say, let's say the Giants lose two out of three against Cincinnati, but then win three out of four against the Nationals or, you know, win two out of three against the Reds and then split against the Nationals, something like that. Um, So that would be, let's say, I don't know, two wins in Cincinnati, two wins in D.C. So that would be four and three. This is a seven game road trip, so I'll just say four and three, and hopefully it's better than that. But um, I don't know. It's, you know, five and two is very good, and two and five is very bad. So four and three, three and four, hopefully at least four and three. And the question of will they play better on the road, I hope so, because if they don't, then that's going to sink them because they've been one of the worst road teams in baseball. Uh, and one of the best home teams in baseball. They're 33 and 23 at home, 21 and 33 on the road. And so if, if they could just be playing 500 baseball on the road, they would be very much in a better, they'd be 10 games over 500. Um, yeah, that's crazy. But they've, they're 12 games under 500 on the road. So Anyway, am I do am I thinking of that correctly? Yeah, I mean if they're 10 any, anyway, yeah, I think I am. So hopefully they do. They have a they do have an easier road schedule. It's like the Reds are under 500, the Nationals are way under 500, the A's they have a trip there coming up after that's the next team they play on the road and then the Mariners are good, the Brewers are good. These are the road teams they they will play. The Padres are good, Orioles are good. Royals are having a good season and D-backs are good. So the road schedule is not super easy after you play Cincinnati, DC and Oakland. So they've got to take advantage, especially now, like this is a crucial road trip. So the next question comes from Cameron who says, if Tyler Fitzgerald doesn't hold down shortstop and they feel Marco Luciano isn't the answer either, do they go after Ha Sung Kim in the offseason? So I think that's this is a really interesting question because Ha Sung Kim makes you know a lot of sense for the Giants as a target in the offseason. He makes sense as someone that I think is realistic in that they could acquire him uh, because I think he's he like he he's very I know he's best friends with Jung Hoo Lee, first of all. And then I think he also had good things to say. I I think it was about uh, Bob Melvin. Another reason, maybe perhaps another reason they don't want to get rid of Bob Melvin, um, which they might have to do if they got rid of Farhan Zaidi, because Melvin was like, that's the only way I'm signing this three year deal is if Zaidi is also here for three years. So regardless of Tyler Fitzgerald, I think. Hassan Kim would just be a nice addition to this team. Although, you know, Farhan Zaidi did say that Tyler Fitzgerald has perhaps played well enough to like be at like establish himself as their shortstop for the long term. So yeah, I mean, if, if Fitzgerald plays great, then maybe you, you don't go out and get Hassan Kim, but definitely if he doesn't play great, then yeah, Hassan Kim makes a ton of sense because I think you could get him, you know, a lot of free agents don't want to come here. I think he would be an exception and he would be a great fit and He's a really good defender. There's so many things to like about Ha Sung Kim. And he is a free agent after the season. And his best friend plays for the Giants. And that would just be really cool to have those two together on the Giants. Kind of regardless, I think. Um, M. Triolo says, What would you put our chances at a playoff push? So trying to be as objective as possible. I'm just going to head over to fan graphs really quickly. They have the Giants playoff odds at 11%. They were at like 20% going into the trade deadline, basically. And the teams ahead of them just keep winning. And so that's the main reason why that has fallen. Um, There's this other projection system called ATC that has the Giants at 9.4%. 
there's the bat X that has the Giants at at 7.8 percent. So none of these are good. None of these are good. Um, and it, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that other teams are separating themselves. Uh, the Padres are nine and one in their last ten games. You know, and they're eight games over 500. Diamondbacks keep winning. They're seven games over 500. The Mets are six games over 500. Cardinals three games. So so it has to do with these teams ahead of them playing well. Giants, you know, they're six and four in their last ten. They're coming off a win, um, but and they're only four and a half back. But there are a lot of teams to pass, and th- those teams are playing well. And so. I'm not going to be some homer and say the odds are like way, way better than 10%, but that's, you know, maybe optimistically call it 20% or something. But that's the thing is you do, at the, there's enough time where you, if you just go out there and win games, then the odds are going to change. You know, the odds are predicting that you're going to perform at a certain level, but you have some control. If you go out there and win, 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 then that. 10% keeps going up, you know, it's 10% now, but who's to say what it is in two weeks or four weeks, you know? So as of this moment, these projection systems say 10%, but I mean, I just, I don't want to be, I want to kind of just look at that, look at that and say, that's perhaps accurate um, and not good. And Though that's why a road trip like this is super important. You're playing two below 500 teams. My my guess of four and three, you know, may not be good enough. You may have to if you're playing two below 500 teams. Maybe you got to go like five and two or six and one to really actually finally get above 500 and hopefully just continue to climb and get over the hump, which they just have not been able to do. So that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. Every day is on Monday, breaking down this crucial three-game series in Cincinnati. Giants will face some good pitching. Ellie De La Cruz and his like MVP caliber season. Um, see if Patrick Bailey can and the pitchers can help control the running game. De La Cruz running like wild this season. For your second listen today, Enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast. Host Paul Francis Sullivan, who I spoke to earlier this week on a crossover, a.k.a. Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on X at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Also, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. There's a lot left over, so we'll we'll hold on to those and probably get to more of them next week. Anyway, thank you so much again. Have a great weekend. You are now Locked on Giants.